Welcome back to my vlog series where I take you along with me on my jobs and learn with me along the way. In this video, I'll take you around the Central Coast on a variety of repairs. You may learn things that you wouldn't otherwise learn anywhere else, so come along for the ride. On this day, I started out on a job near Lake Nascimento, which is nicknamed the Dragon because of its appearance from above. There was a tiny crack below the coupler, so I needed to cut that section out and rebuild it. So I removed that assembly, and I'm using an Evertough male adapter on here. If these things are going to get pinholes in them, I don't want the new male adapter to get one up here too, which they can do. So, And I'm not real crazy about using this here, but under the circumstances, it's going to be difficult to take this valve off um, with this close proximity here. I'm just going to use this here and just extend this as far as I can so that it doesn't have a lot of play in it once the water turns on. But before I put glue up in here, I'm going to cover this so we don't have glue going down the pipe. So I'm going to glue this into this first and let that set a little bit before I do the bottom portion. While the glue is drying, I'll show you around. That river down there is from the lake's spillway to the left behind the fog. Got the neighborhood vultures down there by the river. My client grows a variety of wine grapes just for his own use. This lawn had a lot of coverage issues and I had to do a lot of tweaking on this system here to get it this nice and green and even. And in the last two weeks, the wild boars have come through and have torn up everybody's lawns looking for grubs or something. So he has MP rotators in this lawn. I don't know what's happened here. I haven't been here in a long time. Looks like somebody's like deer been eaten on or something. I don't know. I haven't been here in a while. But anyway, they've done all this damage. Their boars have. All this over here. And here. This lawn was nice and even. It had none of this going on before but he put in this um, motion sensor ooh I must have turned it off <laughs> I just realized I could get wet anyway he's got these motion sensor sprinklers set up he said he's the only one who's done that so the other lawns on the street are way worse than this so hopefully I'll remember to record those when I leave here we have deer coming through here too, but they don't do this kind of damage. I did a couple of adjustments on the MP rotator nozzles, but I didn't film it. I came down here because I heard the turkeys. When I first arrived here this morning, there was a large gaggle of geese, no, large whatever of turkeys on my client's front lawn. The turkeys are down the street.
Okay, moment of truth. Cool, everybody's happy. As I leave here, I'll show you what the boars did to the neighborhood lawns. To my knowledge, this has never happened here before, but first we'll check out the turkeys. Here's one of the lawns that got torn up. Looked like somebody took a rototiller to it, but that was just from the boars. Crazy, huh? I've never seen damage from boars before, ever. And I do a lot of work in remote areas. This is the first time in 35 years that I've seen this. But they seem to be desperate for food, uh, looking for critters under the lawn, apparently, due to the drought. Now we're heading out to a remote area east of Templeton. The guy had a valve that needed to be replaced and had a tech line repair needed. Turns out that he and I went to high school together in Bakersfield where he still lives. This place is their second home. Guess what's under here? Peekaboo! Yep, that's an indoor timer outside. So I'm not sure how long this will last out here. It is under an eave, so that helps, but um, really we should have an outdoor timer out here, weatherproof cover and all that. Down here we have a valve that's dripping. Not sure what's leaking on it, but we're just going to replace the valve per the owner's request. This is on a well system. So we have our shutoff here, I guess. Yep. If there's a problem. So I'm poking around looking for a shutoff valve for these. And what do I find? heard the plastic lid when I was pushing around with the shovel. So there's the shutoff valve box right there. Yep, so here's the valve box and even the valve itself I'm going to have to dig out because um, that handle's not really accessible. I actually, there was more dirt in there than that I dug out before I started filming. And a spider. But you gotta leave these valve boxes uncovered. Don't let them get buried in the dirt like this was. You're gonna need it sometime, and you may need it in an emergency, and you wanna be able to get quick access to it. Okay, I got it cleared out enough where I could turn the handle on it, so it's in the off position, even though I already have the water off. At least we know it works for the future. I have the valve cut off, cut it right below the mill adapters, and I have the new coupler glued on here. This is not glued on, I just have it resting on there, but you can see the width difference that the new valve, the hunter valve, is wider than the orbit valve.
So what do we do? I'm gonna have to dig this out and see if I can pull this vertical pipe this direction. If not, I'm gonna have to dig down far enough to cut the 90 down there and um, cut a section of the horizontal pipe down there off so that I can move the assembly that direction. Okay, I dug all this out. This is all fibrous roots that had grown around that pipe there. Because, and I'll see all this. I had to cut that out. When you have a slow leak like that, this is what forms over time. So it probably had been dripping like that for many months, if not a couple of years, to get like that. So first I had to cut through that, and then I had to cut through, dig through this clay, and it was tough because I've got th three valves I had to squeeze between with my trenching shovel. I had to take that solenoid off because the wire was in my way. And uh, But you can see the pipe down there. That's the, the elbow and the pipe heading that direction. I was able to get enough movement out of that pipe by digging this down all the way down there to where I was able to get this to do this. And this is completely safe. Uh, there are times when it's not. So, But getting more length out of the pipe here gives you more flexibility for the pipe to spread like that. So... Um, and uh, because this is, especially since this is on well water, I definitely want to make sure I had a filter on there. I didn't bother putting a pressure regulator on because I know the water pressure here is low. So there's no need for a pressure regulator. But I did put the filter on there. This is the other half of it here that I'll glue on after the pipe glue dry. That I'll screw on once the glue dries on the piping. And then I'll get the solenoid put on there. But I, I let the gases from the chemical reaction down here escape through here and out here. So I've had this stuff in the past. I've had a few times where this stuff is blown off because there was too much um, gas pressure inside the pipe. So I'll give it about 20 minutes and then put it back together and turn it on and see what happens. As these valves get replaced, they'll want to have a filter on each one of these. And really there should be a filtration system in place for the irrigation system, which you can see on this video that I've created a couple of years ago about well water. while the glue is drying, I'm going to take these off one at a time, these solenoids, and we're going to redo where that handle is because you saw it was butt up against there, and there's several of them like that. And when that happens, sometimes it can't turn enough, and the water will bleed through, so it won't shut the solenoid all the way off, and so it'll bleed through the valve and you'll have leaking out in the landscape somewhere. So what we're going to do is we take this solenoid off and we're going to snug this up. Okay, just snug. And we're going to place the handle over here at 7 o'clock. With that being 12 o'clock. Got it at 7 o'clock, so it's clear of the anti-siphon cap in case you need to take that off sometime. So that's where we have that. Make sure you have the plunger in there. Then we're going to put this back on. And do your best not to let the wires tangle. Because especially with these old wires, they could break. Okay, and there's that. And we put the handle back on, flow control handle. And we'll, I'm going to do that to each one of these that need it. All done. 
the water coming in here and then it uses tech line go around good idea but it does not need to reconnect over here i see this a lot uh, there's no benefit in that some people say well it increases the water pressure by having it circle like that and actually not enough to make any kind of difference ultimately you want the drip line to be out here under what we call the drip line in other words the edge of the tree or plant ultimately you want it out here because you want if you have it way out here then the roots will grow out to where the water is down in the ground and that's what you want for good strong trees and trees that can handle uh, drought conditions better because they've got more roots they've got more holding power to hold more water uh, if you just water at the base like this see this tree here drip line i'm standing under the drip line right now but see how far away the base of the tree is all your watering is the base guess what happens when a strong wind comes along or we don't have much water down goes the tree i've seen it happen uh, next door where I was growing up that happened on a windstorm one time because the base of the tree was all it was getting watered Same thing here. See the drip line is out here But it's only getting watered around the base So if there's some reason that you need to move the drip tubing out of the way to you know in a situation where you need to uh, Cut the weeds or you need to do whatever There's no way to be able to move it with the circle like that so how can you resolve it? You just cut, you've got your emitter here and your emitter here, 12 inches apart. Just cut here in the middle, crimp that end, crimp that end, and now you can move this out of the way when you need to. Do that on each one of them. This one here is all that you need to do. You got this straight line here going past here just put an emitter here on this side and one on this side and if you want you can put one at the base that's fine um, but that's it if you need more there's two ways you can go at it you can uh, come off with a T over here and you can come around this side keep it out here by the along the drip line and just end it here unless you need to go out to this one too but anyway, you can have parallel tubing, and then you can put your emitters here like that. Okay, so this repair on the same property, this is a cutoff riser that did, somebody had screwed in here and it had busted. It looked like a shovel went through it there. But to simplify this, again, this is uh, unnecessary having this T situation here and it's gonna be difficult to try to screw something back together here so I'm gonna simplify this to the max just like that cut off riser elbow fit into the tubing figure eight on the end got rid of all that junk all I used was three fittings this barbed elbow cutoff riser and that figure eight for the end of the tubing next i move on to a repair job on the coast above cayucas i don't normally travel this far between jobs but today was an exception Okay, the neighbor found water boiling out of this and had to turn the entire system off. So apparently it's a feed pipe feeding the valves. So I'm going to have to dig that up. He supplied me some wood here for me to put the dirt on. That was cool. Once this got dug up, I found it was indeed a mainline issue. 
the elbow here never got glued on well enough. It was only pressed halfway on to the pipe, so eventually it cracked. I rebuilt the assembly and the neighbor offered to bury it. Our next job is in Los Osos. There's a Hunter i timer that handles most of the property, but a battery-operated timer, a Hunter node, is in a remote area and has a broken battery connector, so it's running on just one battery. This means it can only sustain itself for six months instead of 12. I replaced the battery and reprogrammed the node timer. This was a broken section of pipe, if you want to call it that. It's actually a cheapy flex riser. Please don't use these. I replaced that riser with a professional grade swing arm by Rainbird. I installed a Marlex elbow into the existing PVC elbow so I could screw on the swing arm with a Marlex elbow on the end of it. Once that's on, I installed another Marlex elbow onto the other end of the swing arm to create flexibility at this end for the Hunter PGJ rotor spray I was going to screw onto it. Last thing to show you is that the parking area for this property is grass and gravel and there are sprinkler heads in it. To avoid people parking on the heads, I put one of my Sprinkler Pro's marking flags next to each one. You can tell it's mushroom season. There were a few more jobs I did, but there was nothing exciting to show. I hope you learned some things. Let me know in the comments section. Remember the free downloads that can help you with your irrigation. Also remember the resources site linked below that has most of the products for sale that I've discussed in these videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.